Minecraft is my go-to chill game. Between that and Minecraft Dungeons, I pretty much just play those games on autopilot because if you die, there's no real penalty. But why not combine the game of Minecraft with the stress of 2020? Why not make it so that if you die, your world is deleted? That is the most difficult difficulty of Minecraft. It's called hardcore mode. You have one life, no chances, no do-overs. And in a challenge that was originated by Luke the Notable and taken on in VR by Forge Labs, I took up the mantle of people who are going to take on this challenge and survive 100 days in hardcore Minecraft. But that's enough talking about it. It's time to get started. I loaded up a brand new world, spawned in day one. I immediately started punching trees to assert my dominance over the world and start modifying it. The first blocks I'm going to change. From there I went and punched a different kind of tree because I'm fancy like that. Went ahead and grabbed myself some rudimentary wooden tools and then decided, yeah, let's triple down and went for yet another kind of tree. From then, I decided to let the wildlife know who's boss. Since every Minecraft adventure starts with digging a hole and living in the side of a mountain, I decided that's what I'm going to do. Upgraded my tools to cobblestone and decided to yeet myself off the cliff of this world because why not? I'm only one night in. I then immediately boxed myself into a wall, lit it up, and started digging my way down to the ground level. At the beginning of day two, I was still working on my downward staircase and thought I should go introduce myself to the neighbors. It didn't go well. And then I dug my way out to a ground level entrance to my base and decided to explore some of those caves that I saw on the surface. I went to go get some iron. I almost died, but then I got what I needed. I put a door on my base so I'd be able to keep the neighbors out, window to be able to see what time it is from the main area, and then made a bed because I need somewhere to sleep. I ate like a king and decided to start digging my way down to the bedrock again. On the morning of day three, my downward quest dug me into a cave system and I was able to find more iron. Awesome. The rain stopped a little bit later in the day and I decided I should probably go see the sun, searching out for seeds and hunting fish with a sword. I decided I'm going to embrace the hobbit lifestyle and build my base primarily into the side of this mountain, which means the front of my house needs to be round and look pretty cool. If I'm going to survive, I need to protect myself. So I decided to go full Iron Man with a touch of Captain America and then rounded out the day with some night farming so I'd be able to set up a reliable food source. Day four was all about base improvements because I want to make this a place that I'd feel bad if I lost access to it. So I decided to improve the flooring, make the different segments so I'd be able to store things in different modules and replace some of the cobblestone with diorite. Just do me a favor and don't tell Iskal. I continued on all of these improvements all the way through the night, and now I have a place that I'm excited to call home. Hopefully, I'm going to make it all the way to 100 and be able to keep this base. At the start of day five, I found someone messing with my crops, but I was quickly able to deal with him. And then I grabbed a few other plants to diversify my resources. I was starting to get a little bit hungry, and eating apples just wasn't going to cut it. So I'm going to pen up some sheep and chickens to be able to get some good food sources. This first guy walked right in. I don't think he's the smartest one of the bunch. I had to use wheat to lure in a few new friends and then realized I had blue flowers. So now I have blue sheep. I then repeated the process with some seeds, so I have chicken too. That's most of a happy meal, right? Day six, I want to continue my travel down to bedrock, so I started elongating the staircase and making it a little bit easier to travel. I found silverfish. Lots of silverfish. Day seven, I started setting up a furnace area down on the bottom of the staircase so I wouldn't have to come up to smelt, and then started exploring the caves, torching it up as I went. I was able to find some general resources, but nothing too extravagant, except, oh yeah, there it is, my first bit of money, I'm rich now. After lighting up the whole tunnels, I started staring my way up because there's no way I'm jumping up 50 feet, and then went to go defend my homeland from the monsters, and exploding creepers and skeletons with bows got me down to three hearts, so it was time to run inside and try to stay alive. I've spent a week in this world. I don't want to lose it. Day eight was all about recovering from the damages of the previous night's somewhat misguided fighting and finishing up the entryway to my base to make everything look pretty much unified. Day nine was all about making my animals feel the love tonight. And then I realized I should never sing in this video again. I replenished my crops and then went back for round two. I realized I'm gonna have to start making a pretty big farm soon to be able to keep up with the demand. But looking out the window from my base, I'm already in love with this little valley and I'm going to make it mine. Day 10, I made sure to take care of all my farms and animals before jumping in a boat to range out to see what the area around my base was truly comprised of. I ended up in open ocean, swimming with a new dolphin buddy who followed me around as I grabbed a couple lily pads and some leaves. And then I 
realized I was thoroughly and completely totally lost. As night set in and the drowned started to claw at my boat, I started to panic. There were skeletons with enchanted bows firing at me from every island that they could, and one of them eventually knocked me out of my boat. I panic ran in the random direction and found myself lost in another birch forest. The start of day 11, I found myself walking through a birch forest where nothing looked familiar. Even the mountains around weren't the mountains of my base. I very quickly found a beehive and marked it with a cobblestone pillar to be able to identify it later, if I ever happened to survive all of this, but started searching around for iron and redstone. This is what's gonna be essential if I'm gonna find my way home. With this unfamiliar landscape, I realized by the time night fell, I'm gonna need a place for shelter, so I started looking around. Walking up into an empty field, I saw a ruined nether portal, a new overworld structure generated in 1.16, of which I was playing the snapshot. These are partially constructed portals to the nether, corrupted in the ground around them, and this would be exactly where I wanted to stay, because it would be useful later if I made it. The chest next to it had some good loot, but I still needed to survive the night. I built myself a little two by three base, ate some fish in the middle of the night while the sounds of monsters around me ravaged me. The iron was cooking, but I still needed to find redstone if I was going to make it home. The morning of day 12, I ran out to combat the monsters to get a few rudimentary resources and just load the chest with a few supplies and easy experience. I had to fight off this guy with a golden hat. I was able to kill him and I took it felt good. I ventured down into the nearest cave system, but the entire area was destined to kill me. Dangers lurked around every turn, exploding creepers, zombies armed with iron swords that could kill me in one hit. I had to be extremely careful down here. I branched through the winding pathways, running deeper and deeper, fighting off more and more mobs with more and more danger, but struck out on almost everything. Running low on sources, I had to eat zombies to survive, craft torches holed up into the wall, and to be able to get any semblance of light to be able to operate. Things were not looking good. I was starting to run out of wood, and while iron was plentiful, redstone and the more essential materials just weren't anywhere to be found. Running low, I decided to box myself in and start strip mining. Carving my way through the world in a two by one tunnel, no light on either side and no mobs around me, hopefully, I started heading in a random direction, hoping to be able to find something that was useful to me. I eventually found gold, which was good for other materials, but wouldn't help me in crafting a compass to guide me home. I dug myself into another cave system, fighting off monsters and placed my final torch, resorting to setting on blocks on fire with a flint and steel to be able to illuminate things. And then, gathering some lapis, disaster struck. My pick was broken. Now, even if I found a block of redstone, I wouldn't be able to build it because I was out of wood. I'm going to have to head back to the surface to get more materials, but to get there, I needed to break through stone and had to use an iron shovel to do it. On my way up, curiosity got the best of me and I went down the one last branching path I couldn't do. I placed a block of netherrack, lit it, and there I saw the dungeon. Fighting off the first defender, I ran my way inside, and there it is! Some god tier loot and a single piece of redstone, exactly what I needed! I ate my last piece of food and made a mad dash back towards the surface, following my torches and finally making my way into the small base. I was able to breathe a sigh of relief. I instantly barricaded the door because I'm not sure if zombies can still break through the door or not and had a moment of celebration. I was going to make it home. Recrafting a shield and re-upping all of my tools, I towered up to be able to find this nether portal later and headed off home, eager to return to my base. Back at my base on the morning of day 14, it started with inventory management. How exciting. But I had a lot of treasure for my foray out into the wild, so I decided to store it somewhere nice. The day was mostly spent re-upping on farms and animals, but during the night, I needed to torch up my valley to prevent monsters from spawning so I'd have a workable space. Taking on things was pretty easy now that I had a bow and was able to attack at range. That was until the phantoms showed up and started dive bombing me out of the sky. The phantoms alone aren't too bad. You block and then bop them when they head upward, but combine them with zombies, you're gonna find yourself down to almost three hearts. And then combine that with an exploding creeper between you and your front door and you're almost going to die. I did not just survive from the worst cave expedition ever to die in front of my own house. But I'm also a glutton for punishment, so I forehead back out and had a skeleton help me kill a zombie. And I finally took aim, took my shot, and ended the final phantom. But I also took the hint and went and got to bed.
Day 15 was a quieter day. I spent the morning repairing the explosion damage from my somewhat ill-fated fights earlier in the day, re-upped all of my farms, and collected wood from some of the trees growing just outside of my base. Later in the evening, to round out my E-I-E-I-O, I lured some cows over to the base and penned them in as well. Day 16 was all about base improvements, this time the lower entryway into my little hobbit hole in order to match the upper main area. I also moved the door out a few blocks so I could complete the last module, having symmetry in Minecraft is pretty much an essential rule. Really? That was it. I spent all day building and called it a night early so I wouldn't have to deal with any monsters. Day 17, having woken up, realizing that my front door was still completely open to air, I finished burying in the top of my base and harvested my farms to make sure the plants could grow while I was doing something else. I planted a few trees on top of my entryway to complete the hobbit look, and now I have a secret base that nobody could know that was there, and except I'm, you know, posting a video about it. Day 18 started down in the mines, collecting additional resources to finish up the last step of my base beautification project V1. I'm actually seeking out diorite, which if you ask some people is probably a sign that I'm not doing well. The isolation is starting to get to me. And I spent the evening torching up the area in front of my base to further prevent mobs from spawning in here. I don't want to have to build a wall to isolate myself. The terrain really doesn't support that. But with the river and a bunch of light, no mobs are going to be spawning on the main island. And I'm starting Starting to feel pretty safe. Day 19 started with somebody else trying to mess with my farms, which I quickly harvested and then grabbed some shears and made all the sheep woolless. I'm gonna use this for a project that I'm probably gonna build a little bit later in the 100 days, but I'm gonna need quite a bit of wool to do that, so let's get started. Day 20 is about transportation. I wanted to take this little bit of a river on one side of my peninsula leading into my base and completely connect it so I both had water access with a boat directly up to the front of my house as well as getting rid of any land bridges to areas that I would not have torched up. Getting water to be correct in Minecraft is one of the single most frustrating things in the game. So I eventually gave up and just buried in most of the areas that didn't have water, leaving it one deep. I then upgraded my bed from white to blue. I think it looks a lot cooler. Day 21 started with some more storage improvements. I remembered that barrels were a thing that didn't need the block above them to be transparent in order to open. So I started replacing most of the chests with barrels. And then I remembered barrels are not transparent and make the chests underneath them unable to be opened, so I had to break each individual chest and replace it with a barrel bottom up. This was something I would come to regret later, but it was something that I thought was cool. I walked outside and found these creepy dudes with crossbows aimed at me. I was able to quickly dispatch them, thankfully, with the one in the back shooting his friend because every mob in Minecraft has really awful trigger discipline. And then it was time to level up my food. The little on the side of the river farm had served me well for the first few weeks here in Minecraft, but long term, I was gonna need a slightly more industrial solution. Each block of water supports farmland up to four blocks away, meaning that you can have an eight by eight grid supported from a single block of water. So that's what I was going to start doing. I was gonna to need to be producing food in mass quantities for breeding animals and feeding myself. The morning of day 22 started a little bit strange with a pillager captain hanging out on a one block deep platform on the side of a mountain. I was able to dispatch him pretty quickly and then I was off to work. I went to breed my chickens when, oh my god, everything has gone wrong, but they have very short memory spans and I was able to lure almost all of them back into the pen with just a few seeds in my hand. I exterminated the stragglers so no one would know of this day and then went to continue building the farm, walling it in so random mobs couldn't just trample all of my wheat and having nice paths in between because it feels good under my feet. Day 23 was down in the mine, searching for more coal and iron. I was also wondering where I wasn't starting to get better resources out of this area, and I realized a little bit later in this video that I never actually hit F3 to check the Y value of this place. You'll see why it didn't really work out a little bit later. I made some new iron tools and decided the old farm had served me well, but its time was up dispatching all of it and transplanting the crops to the main farming area. That's gonna be taking care of me from now on. I also spent some time doing some general terraforming, filling in the ponds in front of my base so I wouldn't end up falling into one. And during the night, spent the night fighting off mobs and continuing building. I was starting to get a lot more confident in my ability to survive long term. 
Day 24, it was time to explore again. I started running another random direction from my base to see what there was to see around the area. It was pretty much birch forest all the way down with a few cave systems here and there, but nothing really too extravagant. I did find a pool of lava, which would be extremely useful when I wanted to go to the nether a little bit later in this playthrough. So I towered my way up the mountain, grabbed the coal that was in this exposed grotto, and was able to look out on the lands that I had created with pride. This place was starting to come together pretty nicely. Day 25 was more of the same, a little bit more organization, a little bit more shearing of sheep, a little bit of terraforming to get rid of some of the random pools that exist in the middle of my area that I'm not quite a fan of because I've fallen into more than I'd admit, and grabbing the coal from the bottom of them before filling them all up. On the morning of day 26, I wanted to be able to get over that mountain towards the pool of lava a little bit easier, so I left in the dead of night and started towering my way across. I grabbed a little bit of spruce wood because I wanted another color of wood and was exploring this area when I saw it on the side of a floating pile of rock, a pumpkin, something new. I towered my way up and Minecraft is one of the few games that gives me that vertigo sensation in the pit of my stomach, more so now because I know falling means this game is over. I was finally able to grab the block where it almost fell off and I panicked and I turned my render distance up to maximum to see what I could see. I saw the old nether portal from about a week ago at this point in time and thought, it's time to go over there and make that an actual forward base. I tore down the little 2x3, beautified the area, and threw down torches to make this place a little bit safer for mob spawning as well. Which, by the explosions that I was fixing at the start of day 27, was desperately needed. I then found a ravine and water bucketed my way down into it, immediately tunneling my way back up so I'd have a staircase to get there safely. I created a forward base at the bottom of the ravine and started tunneling down. Only having to dig about halfway to diamond was going to come in handy because I was not returning to the surface without diamonds in my hand. I spent the next 40 minutes of real world time strip mining my way through this area of the map in Minecraft. It gets extremely monotonous and the time starts to blend together in this weird sort of in-game yet also in the real life coalescing where I kind of lose track of the days anymore when it comes to quarantine to completely date this video. But day 28, 29, and the start of day 30 were all running in little 2x1 paths, two blocks offset from each other, strip mining this entire area for resources. There were a few times where I ended my way into caves and I found a ton of redstone, gold, lapis, coal, iron. And when just, just when I was about to give up because I knew this part of the video was going to get really tedious, there it was, standing there. And not only a couple diamonds, a full stack of eight, enough for a diamond pickaxe, sword, enchanting table, and one to spare. This was everything I needed. So I quickly grabbed them into my inventory, ran back through the tunnel system that I had completed, bolted my way up to the nether base on the ground floor, and took a breath. I had what I needed, now it was time to get home and get started for the next leg of my adventure. I ran through most of the night to make my way back to the base, and when I crested the hill seeing the torch-lit valley in front of me, I started to get a little teary-eyed. This place is looking really fantastic. I ran into my hobbit hole and started crafting up new tools. Day 31 was all about getting leather and obsidian. I started the day by harvesting crops and breeding all of my animals before hopping over the mountain to get obsidian. I headed over the mountain to that little lava pool I had noticed earlier and using my new diamond pickaxe got enough obsidian for a portal and an enchanting table. Day 32, I wanted to go on a bit of an adventure. Built a little shrine and then built myself up my nether portal. I used a chest for a corner because that was weird, lit it and took a deep breath. This could either kill me or make sure that I was gonna be really set. I set my animals so they were good to go and then popped my way through the portal. I spawned on the edge of a cliff. If I had gone the wrong direction, this show would have been over. I grabbed a little bit of nether quartz for experience right away and then really held my breath and the shift button as hard as I could while I built out a platform to protect my portal from every direction. I set it up so that I'd be able to see my way outside, but God, jumping up there was terrifying. I ran out of pains before I was able to secure the whole thing, but really, this was the moment where I started to panic. Okay. 
I had no idea Hoglins could open doors and one more hit from that thing would have ended me. Day 33, being a little bit more careful for Hoglins, I lit up the area around my new nether base. I grabbed some gold ore, which was nice to know that I'll be able to find it around here. It'll be a good source for trading. And then grabbed some basalt blocks just to get something new that I could look at at my base. I also grabbed some glowstone so I'd be able to upgrade the lighting back at my home base and then realized this is probably enough when I start setting myself on fire. So it's about time to head back and get some resources back in place. Day 34 was all about base beautification, replacing all of the torches with glowstone in specific places to make sure my base would be mob spawn safe. In replacing all the torches, I just loved how it looked, but I couldn't really, I couldn't stay away. I headed back to hell to try to search around. I found an enderman and was able to just barely kill him and get another ender eye, but it's not gonna do me any good unless I find blaze rods. And for that, I need a temple. So I kept exploring. I found this nether portal surrounded by golden blocks out in the middle of nowhere, completed it, lit it, and then head off into the great unknown. It led me into an underground cave system, which we're gonna be back here a little bit later, but I did a quick little bit of exploring to see if I could find more diamonds since I've had such awful luck in getting more to this point. I then realized that it was gonna be way too dark and you all wouldn't see much on the video, so let's pop back in and do something a little differently. Day 35 was more nether exploring, heading off in random directions in search for a nether fortress. I uh, ran into a few hoglins who at one point set me on fire and really these guys are no joke So I wanted to make sure I could be a little bit safe when dealing with them I'm Also, just kind of panicking at this point. They hit hard and fast in order to stay safe with these new friends I'm gonna need to head home to grab a couple supplies Day 36, it had been long enough. My animals needed to make more animals and I needed to then kill them to be able to make more books so that way I could improve my enchanting table so I could start upgrading my gear. Couple bookcases in, I started enchanting, ending up with a power two bow and an unbreaking efficiency diamond pickaxe. This thing is absolutely wild once you take it into the nether. I set up with a grindstone and an anvil so I'd be able to manage things and then headed outside, immediately putting my bow to good use from another pillager raid, which is attacking from the side of the mountain. These guys decided gravity was optional, so they were pretty easy to kill. On day 37, I figured that abandoned nether portal that I had found in the overworld was probably linked to one in the nether, so it would probably lead to something good, right? At least that's what my math was. So I enchanted my gear and then headed out across the birch forest to find that nether portal and complete it with some new obsidian. I stepped through and my day was immediately ruined and my disappointment was immeasurable. Since I was back at my base, it was time for more farming on day 38, which meant more cows, which meant more cow murder, which meant more books, which meant better enchantments. But don't worry, I'm not just using these people for learning, I'm also eating them, so it's totally okay. Day 39, I needed more supplies, more iron and more diamonds. I was gonna go down to my base cave system to see what I could find by just caving around and doing strip mining. And after about 20 minutes of searching around down here, I finally saw it. I was about 10 block levels too high. From the main entrance to the cave system, I dug my way down to the appropriate block level, which is 12, and in fleshing out an entrance to this area, I dug into an abandoned mine shaft. This was about to get a whole lot more interesting. After re-upping on supplies, I realized not only was I in the mine shaft, but the spawner was right here, which was actually a stroke of luck. Poison spiders are no joke, and being able to disable that right away was awesome. I ran around gathering resources, including redstone, gold, emeralds, coal, and really just everything I needed. This place was pretty awesome, and having it right at home was great. I also found another vein of diamonds, bringing my total diamond up that much more, which was something I desperately needed. Day 41 was more abandoned mineshaft exploration. I'm stealing every piece of rail track I can find because I have a little project in mind. But then I found even more diamonds. I'm finally, finally getting the resources I need. Day 42, you guessed it, more mineshaft. I killed a witch and she gave me a healing potion bottle and I killed a creeper and he almost blew up a chest, but there was a lot in there. Day 43, with all the new diamonds, I was upgrading my gear because I need to survive if I ever want this video to see the light of day. And I'm 43 days in now, which is the best playthrough I've had yet. With the better gear on my person, it was time to head back to the nether. And I was no longer as afraid of hoglins, but in all honesty, that was 
probably overconfidence. This one snuck up on me and almost pushed me down into the lava. Video over right there. I found a Hoglin ruined temple, which has a ton of different resources and blackstone, but the Hoglins were kind of aggressive to me still, which really had me concerned. Especially after I broke this block. They really don't like it if you break that block. They all come to murder you. After running away from that as quickly as I possibly could, I stumbled across one of the new nether biomes for 1.16, including the new warped mushrooms, which I'm gonna be able to use to traverse the lava if I do something interesting. After getting very tired of fighting hoglands, I did some quick research and found if you craft gold armor, they'll treat you as friendly and they'll trade for you for gold. So I went full bling and made an entire set of golden armor. It seemed to make them friendly to me. They weren't attacking me on sight anymore and just overall kind of oinked in my general direction. I ran around their base looting all of the chests that I could find and made a mistake of breaking another one of these blocks, which makes them all angry at you again. Murder time again. I made a break for it and thankfully they have the memory of any NPC guard from any video game, so they forgot about me pretty quickly. And this place had a ton of loot, which was a fantastic haul and a quick jump start. I was going to be able to do some bartering with them later, but for right now in the snapshot version I was in, there was a bug, so I decided to to wait and head back up to the service to do a little bit more napping. Day 46, I needed to re-up on all the farms and re-up on all of the animals. Some of them appreciated the ability to get food and to be able to make new babies. Some of them were getting older from being given wheat and some of them decided that they really don't like it if I kill them for their wool and food, but that's on them. Day 47 was back down to the mine shafts. I'm looking for more diamonds so I can get into a full set of diamond gear and feel the most secure. Plus, I'm grabbing gold for when bartering works in the next version of the snapshot. You're able to trade with those hoglands for max tier items, which is something I really want. This cave system is massive and I got lost down here for a couple days, the better part of day 47 and the better part of day 48. Late in the day on day 48, I stumbled across a zombie spawner in a dungeon which had a new music disc. I was upping my music collection and just overall would be great for XP grinding if I were to set it up that way. But I had no idea where I was, so it was time to tunnel back up to the surface. That took all of the day and on day 49, I finally saw sunlight. Well, Moonlight. I also noticed another cliffside pillager raid, so I decided to clay pigeon them right out of the sky and earned my third banner. I tunneled all the way through the mountain to the front entrance of my base and placed the banner over by the other two. I'm just taunting them at this point. Day 50, it was time to build another two modules on the back of my base so I could integrate the tunnel that I had just dug all the way through the mountain and be able to get down to my XP farm from the base. That basically took all day, so day 51 I raided all of the chests that I had with all of the spoils from my first trip down into the mineshaft system and made big piles of metal in my base because who doesn't love big piles of resource blocks? Day 52, now that I had a bunch of gold, it was time to head back to the nether and to try out this whole bartering system. I quickly checked the portal near the temple ruins and it went out to the middle of nowhere and I have no idea where it is and then it was time to give these piggies some gold. After fighting with some of the other piggies who really don't like me for some reason, I did a ton of bartering. I threw over a full stack of gold at these guys, and they give me all sorts of resources, including some endgame material. There's a 2% chance for netherite tools to come out of bartering. Since I've had absolutely horrible luck when it comes to finding another fortress, trading with these guys is my best way of getting resources. I found some potions that are gonna help a ton, but also a few things like soul sand, which on the morning of day 55, I was starting to work on a new project. It was gonna require me to secure all of the top of my mountain, so I spent a good chunk of the evening doing a little bit of XP farming so I could do some enchanting later and torching up the area. On the morning of day 56, it was time to play around with some new mechanics. If you have soul sand on the bottom of a column of water, it will rocket you to the the top at high speeds, which is a great way to ascend vertical distances, and you don't need to worry about drowning either. The only problem is it requires every block to be solid water, which was a lot of going back and forth, which led me into day 57. This took over a full day to complete my bubble elevator. Day 58, with that done, it was time to head back into the mine shaft and dig my way around searching for more diamonds. In doing so, I found yet another cave spider spawner, bringing me up to three for this area, and this one was was dangerous to get into. But after clearing it, I also found some diamonds, which was bringing my total up to something pretty respectful.
impactful. Day 59, I continued caving my way around and found even more diamonds, which was allowing me to create a backup diamond pickaxe with a bunch of enchantments that I really needed, including efficiency and unbreaking. I loaded this up with fortune so it could be my main get me more resources pickaxe and now my collection was about to go through the roof. On day 60 armed with my new pickaxe I just blew my way through all of the walls of the nether trying to find new areas to get access to. I ended up in this soul sand area which when you have soul speed 3 on your boots and you don't know how it works that's going to freak you out but I hit this large lava ocean which I get the feeling that this is what separates me from being able to access another fortress, but I don't know if I'm ever gonna find out. On day 61, it was time to explore the overworld a little bit more. I jumped in a boat, headed down a river, and then just went off in a random direction. And then I saw buildings, and they weren't built by me. I was finally not alone. I found a village with a brewing stand, which is saving me amazingly from not having a nether fortress and a ton of villagers. I fought through the night to protect them and quickly jumped into bed so I could get to the morning of day 62, where I found out my village was not just one, but two nearby villages. The second one is far more defendable from raids. So I started building a wall around it to keep just the average zombies out. This is far enough that it won't be spawned, but I wanna be sure. Day 53, I teamed one of the horses that were around here to increase my mobility, and then just kept building at the wall. Before it got too dark, since I didn't wanna risk these villagers getting hurt, I called it a night early. Day 64, I keep building the wall and then worked my way down for additional cobblestone. I found this very nether-like ravine, which I really think is a death trap and I will never ever return here. I spent a bit of the night fighting to protect my new villager friends from zombies and then called it there. Day 65, I was clearing up the stragglers and the creepers got smart and breached the wall and then dug me a little bit deeper. It was a quick recovery, but I completed my project. The village was now safe. If I ever get to the point where I get bad omens, here's where I'm gonna be coming for the raid. On day 65, I was headed back to my base with the new horse. I didn't wanna risk going through the nether and this trip just felt so different than the last time I was lost in these woods. I can't believe how close I probably came to this village on around day 18 of this entire playthrough which would have changed the course of the whole thing. But with a compass, a horse, and almost full diamond tools and armor, I was feeling pretty awesome as I crested the hill and made my way back just in time for nightfall. Day 66, I realized my horse would be a name. She's a Mustang, so her name is Shelby now. I started building a pen for Shelby that would be worth her time, and at the same time realized I need to show my chickens a little bit of tough love. That night, I started running back towards the village, feeling a lot safer with my overall just existence in the world. Mobs were not scaring me. I ran into a couple slimes, which is going to unlock a whole set of new technologies for me. So this was a great find. Once at the village, I built my nether portal, corners and all, because I'm fancy like that, and jumped through to see where I was going to end up. I ended up at that nether portal that I found on my first trip to the nether, but it didn't link back to my village portal. Instead, it put me back into that cave. I broke it thinking this might be able to send me to where I want to go if I don't do this. And about this time the day rolled over so it was time to explore this cave. Day 67 I was fighting around to try to find my way out and found a little one by one spot with water. Swimming around this was very much an entirely filled cave that was a drowning death trap. So I'm just going to dig through until I find my way through. And I found a dungeon. Now this isn't Minecraft dungeons even though I really love playing that game but this was just about as difficult. But it's good to know that I have another XP farm source if I ever decide to do XP farming. I tunneled my way up to the surface, dug through yet another abandoned mine shaft, but I'm getting kind of sick of those, so it's time to find my way to the surface. I ended up at the bottom of the ocean, but was able to quickly swim my way up, tower up, and see that I was just over the coast from the village that I had just left. Day 68 is time for another project. I'm going to want to be able to get to and from that village without having to run through the nether, and that cast almost ended me right there. I was able to kill it, and then project is to begin on the my nether highway. I'm building this up near the roof of the nether, and this portal takes me back to my base. Perfectly timed, perfectly positioned. What was basically all of the rest of day 68 was mining through to the correct coordinates so that I could perfectly link up a portal to the portal that I had placed inside of my village. And you know what? I can divide by eight, so that worked beautifully. 
From there, I deactivated the portal on the main level, but retained a ladder so I'd be able to come down to the nether whenever I wanted to. I ran back over to the village, defend the wall from a zombie attack, and slept here. My next step was about to begin. You gotta know that I started day 69 by making all of my animals make babies because I'm still a 12 year old at heart. That chicken didn't see anything. I popped a spare diamond pickaxe into a frame so I'd never have anything and then began beautifying my area for my new neighbors because I'm not gonna be living here alone for much longer. Villagers have a penchant for drowning themselves and getting themselves stuck in holes. So I wanna make sure that there's nothing like that. And I also wanna make sure that there's more than enough space for an actual villager town in this area. I went through and did a huge beautification project throughout most of day 69. And then on the morning of day 70 I sat up some roads and then began building the frames for the houses that I'm going to be building for my new villager friends. I'm not playing this like other hardcore series and just sticking everybody in a one by whatever box. Oh no, I want them to be living in style. I grabbed enough obsidian for another nether portal, headed back over to the village that I want to keep as a functional village for raids, and then realized that that second village that's in the middle of the woods is practically indefensible. So I'm gonna start raiding everybody from here. I slept here really quickly, and then on day 71, the great migration began. I set up another portal in the middle of this base and tunneled my way in to the nether highway system, portaling on the other side so that I knew it'd be fine. I started raiding for all of the blocks that were useful and grabbed some powered rails in addition to all of the rails from the mine shafts and then figured out exactly how far I needed to go to set up another highway that I'd be able to ferry villagers from one portal to the other. Then I set up a portal on the receiving side to capture villagers. The fact that you can put two people in a boat makes this super, super easy. And I began transferring, read, abducting villagers off to my main area. This guy didn't want to get in the minecart and as soon as I broke the tracks, he knew what was up and jumped off to his death. I ran back to my main village because I saw a ton of zombies over the wall. Seriously, this is kind of dangerous. But I was fine and on the morning of day 73, it was time to transfer some villagers to their new home. I sent this guy off along the track and then ran behind him breaking the cart so he would end up in my area. Once on the other side, I boated him around until he was able to pathfind his way to a worker block and the first guy here needs to be able to set up food supply lines for my new area so he became my first farmer honestly it looks like he likes it here i'm super excited i built him a house right by the fields so he'd be able to get in and out whenever he needed to and then realized i needed to make it a little bit bigger so i worked on that and then called it a night myself day 74 my new villager friend was ready for trading and i was able to start collecting emeralds i'm going to be using these to power something really awesome but that's kind of a 200 days thing maybe if we survive that long i planted all the carrots from the original village and then spent most of the day collecting more resources and building more houses. I'm going to want these villagers being able to live somewhere nice and I don't just want to make a single confined space. So we're going to be going with something kind of cool. I'm using dark oak and cobblestone and dark oak planks for my general build palette because it matches with my interior base. And in all honesty, dark oak is probably one of the best additions for all of Minecraft when it comes to building blocks. So I'm all about this. Day 75 was more finishing of houses. This was about the point where I stopped playing Minecraft and I started playing City Skylines because I want these guys to have a cool place to live and I also want this to just look nice. I started building some different work blocks including lecterns so I'd be able to hopefully get my way up to cartographers which would be awesome for trading and then back to the main village to transfer some more villagers. On day 76, I built an outbound rail system from the outbound side of the portal, so I'd be able to get villagers into the village area without having to boat them across. I traveled my way along the nether portal and then used the boat delivery mechanism to get them all into the portal and then back on the rail on my way into my main town. I'm really starting to fill out the beds in this place. And they're all starting to find their ways to jobs, and this guy has a luck of the sea book, which is gonna make my fishing pretty interesting. Day 77, now that I pretty much refined the villager delivery process, it is time to break down this village for basically all that it's worth. I'm grabbing all of the beds so that villagers will pathfind to an area closest to the portal to be able to do their work and to be able to be transferred off to the main village. Every block that is valuable as a resource is getting switched over and they're all gonna refine their jobs on the other side. Day 78 was 
kind of the same. At this point, I'm grabbing resource blocks, including mossy cobblestone, and I'm transferring villagers one or two at a time, as that's all the minecarts I currently have on hand. Occasionally, they would try to find their way into my base and also become fishermen. These would be two things I would need to fix. So I broke the bed inside of my base and realized that more zombies are going to be spawning in my area as zombie raids might take place on the villages. So I needed to light up both sides of the river in order to keep everything safe. Day 79, my village is really starting to come together. To fix the problem of villagers ending up wanting to pathfind inside of my base, I switched all of the barrels to chests and I had to double up all of my resource gathering and just clean things up. It was something that took most of the day but was much needed. I transferred the bell outside so that there was a new actual town center which should help with the pathfinding and got this one guy who got a little bit too interested in my base back outside. I ran my way over and grabbed a few more villagers from the main base who always seem to get stuck and in trying to fix them, I kind of blew up my front door, which was unfortunate. Day 80 was more villager transferring and one of the iron golems tried to come over to help and I felt really kind of really bad as he suffocated in the wall before I was able to do anything to actually save him. That was heartbreaking, but thankfully I have enough villagers over at my actual base that they're spawning iron golems if they happen to feel threatened, which they might be from all of the phantoms that keep attacking me since I've been at this for a couple days and forgot to sleep. This guy, you're getting a roommate for tonight. Day 81 was more city skyline building as I continue working on the village for my villagers. I want this place to look truly unique, but I also want this place to just be something that I am personally proud of. It's very easy to get away with just building one room and calling it a day in a hardcore series, but this is something where I really want to stand by the aesthetics of all of the builds, which is why we're gonna be sticking with this. By the morning of day 82, I had exhausted all of my building material resources, so it was time to re-up and then continue finishing all the houses. The butcher was next. I stationed him right next to all the chickens, which is probably why he wants dead chicken for emeralds. I was happy to oblige. The bell got a much better mount point and everyone is feeling the love tonight more villagers are being spawned and my town is growing day 83 i found a new piglin buddy on my side of the portal i won't talk about what happened to him worked my way back over to the village and started collecting the last few blocks and the last few of my new neighbors this was a pretty exhaustive thing as i wanted to get all of the terracotta the stained glass any resource blocks that are harder to come by and just make sure i had all of these resources to make my home base look that much better. After the last villager transfers out of here, this is not a village anymore. So all of these blocks are pretty much for the taking. And I worked my way all the way through the night, grabbing the last few people and pathfinding them into the portal to be able to get them off to safety. Day 84 was the absolute last day that I was pulling these resources and I found out I missed a few beds, which is why the last couple villagers weren't making their way towards the portal. But in breaking everything down and getting everything transed over, the everything project of getting my village set up was finally complete. I transferred the last couple villagers over, got them ready, and got them into the portal with their new jobs in their new home. And I am so, so excited to not be alone in this area, in this valley anymore. 85 was more trading to get all of my new neighbors to be happy with me. I wanna level them all up so I'll be able to get to some of the God tier level trades in the higher levels, which is gonna be extremely important for getting better gear. But I wasn't done collecting things from other villages. The zombie wanted to come along for the ride and no, sorry, you're not welcome. But the pigs, the pigs are something that I want. There are none around my main area and for a while I was gonna boat him over and then I remembered, wait, He'll just follow me if I have carrots. Day 86, I built a pen for my new piggy friend, which basically completes my animal needs. I have one more that I'm gonna want to grab, but that just hasn't been seen in any of the biomes so far. I checked in with all my villagers, some of which I had trades that I wanted and some of which has trades that I didn't, and then grabbed a few more pigs over from the actual good village and carted them in to the base. I now have enough pigs that I can make an infinite number of pigs. Day 87 was another round of house building. I want this village to be something extremely worthwhile. And I don't know, I'm getting kind of attached to these villager friends of mine, so I want them to have a place that just looks nice. 
I also started building a dock for the fishermen. I have a ton of barrels which are available to me because I'm no longer using them on my base and villagers, fishermen specifically, will trade for things like string and flint and fish which are unlimited resources. But I got so tied up in the village building project that I once again forgot to sleep for several days and was attacked by phantoms in the middle of the night. Day 88, I was off to complete my list of animals. I found some pigs within a hundred blocks of my base and immediately got annoyed at the fact that I had to travel through the nether to collect them, but I was here for some buzzy bee friends. I silk touched their home beehive, which allowed them to pathfind into it really quickly once I planted it at my house, and then set them up with as enough flowers that they could ever want. I want my new buzzy friends to be happy. Hashtag team bees. Smoking out the beehive is how you can collect resources from it without pissing them all off and having everything go really badly and your new buzzy friends to die. So I did that and collected honeycomb so I'd be able to build additional beehives and really ramp up my bee production. Day 89, I grabbed one more buzzy friend from the birch forest and another set of roses, which I didn't realize I had never somehow not gotten roses before. Hopped on Shelby and I think riding a horse while carrying a bee with a lead while holding a entire cooked raw chicken in your hands is pinnacle Minecraft. I made sure Shelby had some treats for doing such a good job taking me out and about and also made sure to take care of my beehives to be able to finish construction of another round. Day 90, it was time for a redstone project to mix something up. My wall of furnaces was getting me so far, but it was far too manual and required a lot of care and attention to make sure I split everything evenly and it just wasn't something that I wanted to do anymore. So I started building a super smelter. The idea would be that you can just put things into different chests to be able to have it automatically smelt and have all of the output put into an output chest. I was working up a design from Mumbo Jumbo, which I had found online, which it turns out that doesn't really exactly work in the newer version or didn't work in the space that I was actually able to allow for everything. It was just a bit bigger than I wanted to, and I, re I remembered how much I sometimes get frustrated with redstone. So, on the morning of day 91, I had completely torn that design out and come up with something far simpler. Just some simple minecarts with treasure chests embedded in them, carting back and forth across multiple hoppers on top of multiple furnaces. It might not be the most efficient, it might not be perfect, but it is something that is just simple and effective and does exactly what I need for the time I have remaining in this world. And in doing that, I don't want to leave my new villager friends with- OH MY GOD IT'S MORE PHANTOMS! I was sick of this though. I wasn't gonna just hide away every night, so I started bowing all the phantoms to tell them and really send a signal of who's boss. At one point in time, I accidentally hit one of the iron golems of my village, and this was an absolute panic attack because these guys will kill me and having them mad at me makes living very difficult. But thankfully, they forgave and forget. Day 92, like I was saying, I don't want to leave my new villager friends without some guidance or religion. And what better to do that than to build an actual proper temple with a brewing stand in place so that the cleric has somewhere to operate out of. Now the default Minecraft church is okay, but I wanted to build something a little bit cooler. I know that given a little bit more time, this design would be more impressive, but with only a few days left, I made do with what I had on hand and put to work something that would just set them up with good guidance for the rest of their journey here. But I forgot to sleep, so the phantoms attacked me again and in the middle of the night. This time, however, I made sure to never fire where my iron golems were. The morning of day 93, I was finishing off the phantom menace, grabbing a few phantom membranes so I'd be able to repair some elytras if I ever happen to get that far, and finished building off the temple. It's the small detail work at the end that was actually kind of time consuming and burned through most of the day, and it started raining again, which was really unfortunate and makes the footage look kind of crappy, so apologies on YouTube compression on this one. Day 94, it was still raining, but a wandering trader had popped in umbrella-less and wanted to come see me. I grabbed a few trades from him just for the experience and emeralds, and then started trading all of my mob kills that I've been collecting for the duration of this Let's Play out to the cleric to be able to level him up. Now with the town expanding that far outward, it's time for some terraforming because this cave right here needs to go. 
Any villagers that fall down into this are almost likely, almost guaranteed, marked for death. And I can't be having that for my new loyal subjects. I set up a dirt covering to protect them from falling down into the mob infested area. Checked on my super smelter to make sure it was working fantastically, which it is and I'm so excited about. And then finished my night off with, now that I was at level 30, a power 5 bow, which is going to be absolutely devastating. Day 95, it's time for one more round of resource gathering. And now that all the iron has smelted up in my super smelter, I can turn it up to full capacity with additional hoppers. The day was then spent doing chest organization because I want this place to be easy to navigate because this world is going to be available for download down in the description. You're gonna be able to play along after 100 days surviving in this world and just really get your feel for everything I had accomplished. And there's no better way to show off what you'd accomplished than a gigantic bling pile at the back of your base. So all of the gilded blackstone that I had stolen from the piglins, yeah, I was definitely showing that off. Day 96, it was time for one last journey in the one last cardinal direction. I hopped on Shelby and started my way out into the world, finding another swamp and another abandoned nether portal. The resources around here were stuff that I'd all want, including magma blocks, which are fantastic for setting up farms, especially auto mob farms. So I made sure to grab everything I could. But when I went to lead Shelby to her fence post, she was gone. I towered my way up to attempt to see her, but at this point it was getting late, I was getting nervous, and I needed somewhere to be able to stay. In water bucketing my way back down so I didn't die from fall damage and really make this entirely anticlimactic, I finally found Shelby and then just booked it in a random direction to avoid the skeletons and creepers that had spawned on the island that we're in. The rest of the night was a harrowing battle with mobs attacking from all sides, but with my gear and weapons being enchanted and as powerful as they are now, it was a lot more manageable than this went and it happened in day 13. I was finally surviving and thriving in Minecraft. And I got a music disc to prove for it. Morning of day 97, I wanted to complete my mob collection, but the fox ran off right after I had given him all the berries, which made me feel kind of used. I lit the portal, expecting it to lead somewhere awesome, and then remembered how nether portals worked and ended up back in my base with a bunch of villagers stuck in the nether, so this is unfortunate. While I really wanted to go back and save Shelby, day 97 was basically just spent unstucking all of my villagers who had found their way stuck in the nether and then going ahead and protecting that nether portal. I grabbed enough obsidian so I'd be able to build a portal on the right side once I knew the coordinates and head to sleep so I could go save Shelby. This was going to be a rescue mission to end the series. I knew that I needed to get my horse back to base if I really wanted to call these 100 days a success. I made my way back to where Shelby was and in a moment of complete ignorance, jumped back in the portal thinking that would get me back to base as quickly as possible. And well, I forgot how mobs deal with nether portals and Shelby didn't make it. Shelby was extremely good to me, so I wanted to make sure that I set her up somewhere nice. I buried her remains just outside of her pen underneath a tree and made sure to commemorate the occasion. She'd been with me for 30 days of this journey, and I just felt really bad that she wasn't there to see it through to me with the end. At the time, I just got kind of frustrated and went out to kill all of the mobs, even though none of the mobs killed her, I made that mistake, but it felt good to just go around stabbing zombies for the rest of the night of day 98. I kept wandering off in random directions and at one point realized that I was once again lost in my Minecraft world. I mean, this time I had a compass and I could get back, but in running around, I stumbled across yet another village. I found new animals to befriend and wolves, one of which who liked me, one of which not so much. And they helped me fight off the zombie menace that was attacking this village. But come the morning of day 99, even though we had just been fighting zombies off, the villagers wanted nothing to do with me. Perhaps they knew what I had done to Shelby and just couldn't forgive me for it. 
I headed out to the sea to be able to look at it one more time with my new dog friend in tow, baited him into a boat, and decided it was time to head home. I had only one more day of this playthrough to complete to really call this a victory, and to do that, I needed to be back at my base when I did it. I rode on the boat as far as I could, which led me into the night, and day 99 was following my compass and battling my way through another wave of mobs to get myself to some semblance of safety. I took every precaution I could to make sure that my new wolf friend would survive and stay healthy, but he also did everything he could to make sure I was fine chasing down skeletons so they couldn't just constantly bow spam me. And on the morning of day 100, as we were fighting out the last round of mobs, a flaming skeleton set my dog on fire and I immediately started to panic. I was able to thankfully, to save him potentially at the last moment before it actually would have expired. And then I had an amazing world to show to grunts. Upon cresting the hill, seeing torches, and ending up back in my box canyon valley, I had done it. I was home. I said hello to all my villager friends, showed them the spruce trees from a world that I had not yet discovered, and that set grunts up to look over his new kingdom with an amazing throne. I bubble elevated my way up to the top and then took in the view. At day one, I threw myself off this cliff and I did it again for day 100 to celebrate an accomplishment and a mission well lived. This village was not here. This canyon completely empty when I started my playthrough and now look at everything that had been constructed. The amount of villagers, mobs, creations, any destruction I had caused in the world as well. All of this over the last 100 days and all of it in a single life. I set up a new bed inside of my base far enough away that the villagers would not pathfind to it and went to bed for a thankful universe. And that, my friends, was my 100 days playthrough in hardcore Minecraft. If you would like to see me do more hardcore Minecraft playthroughs or other Minecraft challenges, please leave a like, leave a comment, share the video with your friends. And again, special thanks to Luke the Notable and Forge Labs for being inspirations for me to do this video in the first place. This is, I think, the longest Let's Play I've ever released. Definitely the longest I've ever done solo and was a heck of a lot of a labor of love. If you watched it all the way to the end, you were absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this story. And if this video does well enough, chapter two, the next 100 days, will be right around the corner. Until next time, everybody, my name is Legundo. Thank you for watching. Be good to each other. And I'll see you next time.